Hey, yeah, come look at this. So I'm going to show you in the Bible, in the New Testament, where the Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu was salam is prophesied. This man then after Jesus Christ because he said I'm gonna send you another hero <laughs> I'm gonna send you a counselor His name is the Admirable One. His name is the Chosen. His name is the Praiseworthy. His name is Muhammad. So what? Yeah. What did you say? Yeah. Gospel of John. And they asked him, What then art thou, Elias? And he answered, No, I am not. Art thou that prophet? And he answered, No. The question is, who is that prophet? So in John chapter 1, when they asked John the Baptist, are you that prophet? They're referring to the prophet that Moses spoke about and said would come later in Deuteronomy 18. Now I know you think that is Muhammad, which we'll get to in a little bit, but according to the author of the Gospel of John, that is Jesus. In John 4.44, Jesus calls himself a prophet. In John 6.14, the people say, Surely this is the prophet who is to come into the world. John 7.40 says, Surely this man is the prophet. Jesus even says in John 5.46, If you believe Moses, you would believe me, for he wrote about me. This is most likely a reference to Deuteronomy 18. And moreover, Acts 3.22 explicitly says Deuteronomy 18 is about Jesus. They say that Jesus Christ Islam, is a prophet, but I'm going to show you here in the few verses down that it can't be Jesus, no matter how you look at it. We go to verse 25, and they asked him and said unto him, Why thou baptizest then, if thou be not that Christ, or Elias, neither that prophet? So here we can see that the Jews are awaiting not only the Messiah, but they are waiting for a prophet as well. So this is coming from the Jewish opponents, not the author of the Gospel of John, who clearly identifies the prophet as Jesus. Moreover, Craig Keener notes in the Jewish background, these figures were often assimilated, like we see in the Gospel of John, with Jesus being Christ and the prophet. So we go to Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 18. It says, Musa alayhi salam is speaking. I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren. Now notice how it says their brethren, not from their self, their brethren. Who are the brothers of the Jews? It's the Arabs. And the Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu was salam was an Arab. So there are two problems with saying this can be about Muhammad. First, the way the author of Deuteronomy uses the term brethren or brothers is most often in reference to the Israelites themselves. We see this in the very prior chapter. Deuteronomy 17.15 says, You may indeed set a king over you whom the Lord your God will choose. One from among your brothers you shall set as king over you. You may not put a foreigner over you who is not your brother. So who is Moses saying is their brethren? Well, the Israelites themselves are brothers. He's not referring to other tribes like the Ishmaelites or the Midianites. We see this in Deuteronomy 18.7, where the Levites are called brethren. So in context, Deuteronomy 18.15 is referring to a prophet arising among the Israelites, not another tribe. The other problem is that in the biblical text, the Arabs and the Ishmaelites are never called the brothers of the Israelites. Only the Edomites are referred to as that because they are the descendants of Esau, Jacob's actual brother. Furthermore, it says he will be like unto thee, like Moses, like Musa alayhi salam. Jesus Christ alayhi salam was not like Musa. Jesus Christ alayhi salam was not a warrior. Jesus Christ alayhi salam was not accepted by his people. Jesus Christ alayhi salam was not a father. He was not a husband. So Deuteronomy actually tells us how a prophet like Moses would be unique. And it's not those qualities you listed. It says the prophet will speak the words that God puts in his mouth. He will speak with God face to face and perform miracles, signs, and wonders. If we go back to the Gospel of John, we can see that Jesus fulfills all these requirements. According to Islamic theology, Muhammad cannot fulfill all these. And moreover, he was not an Israelite, so he cannot be the prophet that Moses spoke about. Who is the prophet? Who came after Jesus, alayhi salam? Muhammad, alayhi salatu salam. Or Joseph Smith? Or Ellen G. White? Or David Koresh? William Branham? Or Gerald Flurry, who said he was the prophet of John 1, 21 to 25. But none of these guys were Israelites, just like Muhammad wasn't. Don't just sit and accept. Use your intellect. Exactly. 
And when we do that, we can see that Deuteronomy 18 cannot be about Muhammad. Do not quote mine the Bible. Be sure to read the context to make sure you understand it properly. Beside the coming of Muhammad and whom be peace. Yes, both the Old Testament and the New Testament. In the Old Testament, in the Song of Solomon, chapter 5, verse 16, the name Muhammad is mentioned in the Hebrew text. But the English translations do not repeat his name. They just simply give a translation of his name saying, he is altogether lovely. But if you read the Hebrew text, it says he is Muhammad. And there's a description there of Muhammad. You know, that's desperate. That's desperate. The word Mahmad is used in many verses of the Bible. For example, Ezekiel 24 to 16. The word used is desire, which translates to Hebrew as Mahmad. Why don't you say that's Muhammad too? This chapter is simply a woman describing her lover to her friends. We can see that the friends asked to see her lover in the next chapter. Where has your beloved gone, O fairest among women? Where has your beloved turned aside, that we may seek him with you? The Shulamite. My beloved has gone to his garden, to the beds of spices, to feed his flock in the gardens, and to gather lilies. Verse clearly shows that her beloved is not some man who comes years after. He is her lover. She goes on to tell us how much she loves him. Oh my love, you are as beautiful as Tirzah, lovely as Jerusalem, awesome as an army with banners. The verse goes on and on. Besides all of this, Songs of Solomon is a book of songs, not prophecy. The funny part, these people try to fit their prophet in the Bible and go on to claim it's corrupted. <laughs>